Devil Jin's Winnerate has not improved in Season 4. The ability of the player base to execute a tool set is not the only justification for the power of that tool set. But here's a good comparison. If you had a nuclear bomb and nobody knew how to press the button to activate it, would you say nuclear bombs are fine? Knowing its capability? No, right? You would say all it takes is somebody to figure out how to press this button and then we're fucked. I think that's the best way to compare it. It's like, if somebody had a nuke and they didn't know how to use it, does that make the nuke bad or the player bad? It's different in fighting games though, because you nerf the character if someone proves it's OP. Right, exactly. But until somebody does, then you're left with this problem where there's a freaking nuclear weapon sitting in there, and then other people start complaining, saying, I don't have a nuclear weapon. Then everybody has it, and then everybody learns to hit their button, and then you're not playing a game anymore. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. Like, people would say, oh, well, yeah, it's a nuclear weapon button, but if people don't know how to press it, then what's the big deal? Well, big deal is because if they don't know how to press it, why do they need that button? So it feels good when they accidentally scrape it once in a while? It sells better, but it's not healthy, and that's the point. Top five hardest characters to play? Bro, I'm a Noctis player. Every character is hard to play. <laughs> uh, I think it depends at what phase of the game. So like, I think some characters are hard to pick up. Like, I think Steve is kind of hard to pick up, right? Or Devil Jin might be hard to pick up. Geese is hard to pick up. But like, executing their game plan? I think is not too bad. Like, Devil Jin requires you to do a lot with your hands, right? But as soon as you're- what the fuck is that? As soon as you're able to automate that, as soon as you're able to automate the hand component, and you're just thinking about what your opponent can do, Devil Jin has an answer to everything. And that's why he's so good. Geese's execution barrier is over at- yeah, I think Geese's consistency might be an issue, but yeah. Takes a lot of muscle. Yeah, so exactly. I think what where Devil Jin becomes easy to play is when all of that is second nature, which it isn't for me. So for me, he's still hard to play. But like the ability to like the structure of his game plan of getting to the wall is so well supported by his entire kit. The structure of trapping people at the wall is fucked up, right? So, even though he has stuff that's hard to do, you can strip him down to a really cheap character. Like this shit. I canceled it. I didn't mean to cancel it. Uh-oh. See, if I didn't cancel it, execution it. Was that hard to do? No, I just messed up. Alright, let's try again. Last time I went mid, so I'm gonna hell sweep him, and then go mid. Oh. Then I just keep out with my safe, uh, homing high plus frame launcher. Down forward 1-2 is hilarious also. That move is silly. All of these come together in a really... And it's down forward 2. The counter hit mid launch when you mess up. Oh my god. Yeah, Devil Jin's a bigot. No way around it. Oh, nice launch. Holy shit. I think I played this guy before. Huang is difficult, but once you know what moves and stance... Yeah, I think Huang is a, is a difficult character to pick up. Really straightforward to win with in the low mid level, and then at high level becomes hard to use. Unless you're playing against me. But then again, I said high level, so it's a bit redundant. I'm trolling! Warang? Hard, then easy, then hard? Yeah, exactly. I think Lee's difficulty is overplayed, but he is difficult to pick up. Okay. Shit, I'm trolling. <laughs> but, uh, would you consider special characters Yoshi Shao Yu hard to play at high rank even though they have no execution barrier? Um, I feel like there's a lot of moving parts to that sentence that don't have anything to do with each other. You have execution barrier, play at high rank, and specialist character. None of those are inherently tied together. Right? So, I think playing a specialist character at high rank 
requires you to understand like how to play defense, which has nothing to do with any of those things, right? Or understand your offense good enough that you don't have to, which a lot of Yoshis will do, I think. Like Yoshis will just flash out of things. Which is like not fundamental defense, but it works. What a combo! That's the best combo I've done in a while. It wasn't real, but whatever. Open up turtles with Lee? You have a slide, bro! What do you mean you can't open up turtles? Shitty combo. I could have killed if I did. Ah, shit! <laughs> uh oh. Wow, Devil Jin is tight. Devil Jin is top 3 out of 5, why isn't he used more in tournament? Um, I think... Because the- even- because that- uh, we talked about that mental load, right? The mental load of carrying that execution and doing it smoothly enough to make a difference is hard. The game plan is easy, executing all of it is hard, right? Like in a neat package. It's high effort. And why put that effort in when you could accomplish like first to two, first to three results with like a Zafina, right? Like that's high effort and load, which in a tournament setting, sustainability is a big thing. Another thing about Devil Jin is like in um in pools and stuff, you're probably less likely to cheese with something that people don't know. Which Joey Fury has talked about as a legitimate early tournament strategy for consistency is like cheesing people with knowledge checks and stuff. That doesn't really exist with Devil Jim. So that's why I think he's not played in tournament. Am I gonna die to another low? Fuck. So he's top three on five in paper, but not in practically. In a tournament setting, yeah. In a tournament setting, it's not as easy to carry him out. Why does everybody want if they can't? Because. Outside, like, there's other components outside of tournament play, too. Like, he's still... That doesn't... Ch it doesn't change the fact. The fact that he's difficult to manage in a tournament setting with travel, etc. And lots of other, like, extra effects doesn't change the fact that the way he's balanced is uninteractive and really punishing for little... Like, high, high reward and little interaction. I'm sorry I'm causing- no, 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 I don't care. I don't- I don't care about losing rank. That's no big deal. That's no big deal. You're not causing me to lose. So, I- I think this is a good discussion, too. Like, if a character isn't showing up in tournaments, why would you nerf them? Because there is more to win rate and tournament performance that reflects the health of a game. For example, Noctis doesn't have a crazy good win rate. He doesn't have a high pick rate, and he's not winning tournaments. Yet, so many people complain about him in Season 1 and Season 2. So they nerfed the things that were annoying about him, right? Like, you can address game health without looking at results. In fact, that's a good thing to do. Because if you only look at results, it's how you get really silly things in the game that aren't very healthy. Youch. But then are we catering to online play? It's all- it's all aspects. Tournament play, online play, etc. And like, if we were just going by online play, we should buff Devil Jin more. And the mindset of the... The mindset of the top players... Is win with consistency, right? So, if you notice the characters they're picking... Steve, Zafina, Geese... High consistency relative to the effort being put forward. That's the main component. Right? It all comes down to nerfing unfun or under- Yeah, exactly. And you can- I thought we should balance off- No, my point is balancing off of professional advice, which is not just pro play, but death matches, etc. Devil Jin's win rate has not improved in Season 4. The ability of the player base to execute a tool set is not the only justification for the power of that tool set. Like, for example, there's nothing interactive about me canceling this five times and, like, getting a colossal reward off of that every time. 
there's nothing so execution shouldn't be considered a barrier it's not enough to say something is hard to do therefore it's okay everything is a variable right but it, you can't just say oh it's hard to do so it's okay because that eventually disappears as the player base ages and practices under like serious conditions that disappears like that's why Steve down forward 2 was justified for so long Steve down forward 2 was allowed to be homing counter hit launching because oh the combo was hard to do and even then they saw that was dumb eventually right so they took it away it's not considering when judging the strength of Akuma has a big SQ. yeah exactly like is it just because it's hard to do does it make it fair that in a neutral situation you have to be afraid or in an advantageous situation you have to be afraid of him dick jabbing you and killing you right like like consider the strength of akuma's down one two combo it doesn't matter whether it's hard to do or not it's not a fun and interactive situation for both for the defender um that every time you are plus frames or something or like you you have a advantage you have to second guess your offense because of down one two just because he has meter and the possibility exists and the akuma player isn't using that like the execution barrier the onus is on them it's not an interactive component of the game where oh if you could like tech the combo and you have like opponents have the ability to tech midair or something then you could make the argument like yeah it's a kill combo but the opponent has like avenues for counterplay but it's hard to make that argument when literally it's just on the Akuma player to practice it enough. If it's in-game consistent and it's on the player to just practice it enough or get good enough, that doesn't make sense from a balance perspective, right? Character having easier execution is a strength though. It's a definitely a strength, yeah, 100%. So like, there's no objective good or bad, right? Like a game can be more fun to play. So the, the, the perspective on balancing around execution is from a raw competitive standpoint. So if you're playing an online game that doesn't matter, that's fine. But when people's careers are like on the line, saying online and on the line is a poor choice of words. But I take issue with the idea that they can lose one interaction with very little thought and just lose. I think that's a little silly. Like once somebody is consistent at electrics, it's no longer like, imagine if somebody had the ability to just electric on command, which exists. Like, yes, people still mess it up. But how fair is a plus five launcher with very quick recovery that's hard to whip punish? That was insane. That was insane. Right? Like, is that... Would What would you think about it if the execution were simple? What would you think about those move properties without execution? What is your opinion of it? Then add execution as a add execution as a layer or a variable but it doesn't change the fact that the tool is crazy right so move is technically op when people have the execution i think the paper i think the paper he's the only famous person that uses it like that we don't see what happens like the people outside of like top 64 are still fucking good it's a first to two game where there's a lot of variants. Like, Sync isn't making like crazy, like, ICFC results, but he's fucking good. Like, he's flash already. Um, so that's one thing. So, a move is technically OP when people have the execution, or is it all based about the character on paper? I think you, the, I think it's best to evaluate it on paper and then add the execution as a layer of possible difficulty, right? Oh, shit. Because in multiple games throughout history, execution is the first barrier to fall, right? But what remains is the balance decisions that can plague a game and kill it. And it's also, you have to also consider how these tools fit into the context of the whole kit, right? So I think the reason nobody's like complaining about Yoshi nerfs is because he has this flash, but he doesn't have something stupid like, um, like that forces you to press into it. 
The only dumb part of him that forces you to act is like his Okazemi, but even then you can kind of just stay down and let him kill himself. Like Yoshi still has to make a bunch of correct reads. Right? So like, in the con- Devil Jin isn't dumb because he has one or two silly things. It's in the context of his whole kit, he boils down to a character where either you eat a bunch of mids that knock you down, or you eat an unseeable low that takes you to the wall. And maybe if his wall game sucked, that'd be okay, right? But it's not. His wall game is one of the best. And then, take into account that- Oh shit, I'm gonna lose. I won, nice. Um, and then take into account that his mids are good too. So say Devil Jin only had the Hell Sweep wall game. That'd be good, but it's not the end of the world. But Demon Paw, safe. You can dash to make it tracking. You can come out of wave dash. Knock down so it sets up the unseeable low on Oki again, right? He has this bullshit. <laughs> like, in the context of the whole kit, like say Devil Jin were just wave dash electric character. Whatever, right? I mean, that's Heihachi. Heihachi has the seeable low problem until now where his neutral is ridiculous, right? Uh-oh, I'm dead. So, it's a mix of all the variables, but you can, you can evaluate, like, the character's game plan, Devil Jin's game plan, is very straightforward, is advantageous in Tekken 7, right? And his entire kit synergizes with it. That's what makes him dumb. And he has damage on top of that. Like Leo. Leo has a really 650, like pre-patch Leo, her 50-50 game was disgusting at the wall, right? But the, the, the reason why it was okay was because her tools in the open weren't very strong. Her ability to get to the wall was kind of whatever. So you still had situations where you weren't playing to her strength. She had openings. The reason Devil Jin is dumb is because a well-executed Devil Jin doesn't have those openings. Fuck, I messed up. Implying it wasn't ridiculous before the buffs. I mean, yeah, Leo was still ridiculous too. You think Geese right now is in a fair state for his execution? No. <laughs> I think, oh, implying it wasn't, yeah, no, I mean, Heihachi was still ridiculous, but he wasn't crazy. The fact you can do basically on Devil and also up four, yeah, and up four. Devil Jin's parry alone is really good. The armored parry. Here's a good, here's a good, here's a good comparison. If you had a nuclear bomb and nobody knew how to press the button to activate it, would you say nuclear bombs are fine? Knowing its capability? No, right? You would say all it takes is somebody to figure out how to press this button and then we're fucked. Here's a great example. NA Devil Jin wasn't using forward one plus two for the longest time, for like a full season. But that doesn't make it okay. <laughs> it's still a dumb move. Or like Noctis players aren't using forward forward one plus two. Are we gonna say that that move is fair? That move is not fair. It's stupid. But it's good. Man, I'm so predictable with that. Forward 1 plus 2, cancels are dumb. The gimmick isn't the cancel. The cancel is just icing on the shit cake. The dumb part about forward 1 plus 2 is it's homing, it's only minus 12. And the bounce is ridiculously consistent. Yeah. Remove the execution of the combos. Geese has a 14 frame launcher that can 80% you. That was really good, Oki. That was good. Round four. Fight. I think that's the best way to compare it. It's like, if somebody had a nuke and they didn't know how to use it, does that make the nuke bad or the player bad? You know? Yeah, Geese is trainable consistency. Otherwise, Arslan wouldn't play him. If Geese weren't consistent, Arslan wouldn't play him. It's different in fighting games because you nerf the character if someone proves it's OP. Right, exactly. 
But until somebody does, then you're left with this problem where there's a freaking nuclear weapon sitting in there, and then other people start complaining, saying, I don't have a nuclear weapon. Then everybody has it, and then everybody learns to hit their button, and then you're not playing a game anymore. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. That said, this game is tough. You can use forward one plus two as a whiff punish. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Wild West mentality. Geese is unfair. Me and Pika grind each other a lot. Yeah, Geese is hella unfair. So here's, here's a great way to think about Geese. Let's say we want Geese's identity to be his explosive combos, right? So Geese can kill you, but he has to create the opening. Okay, he has this 14 frame launcher. Sure, let's say that's what he gets. He still has one of the best jab down forward one games, right? His low game is super good. Sidestep three, down two evading. Uh, down four isn't broken, but the fact that it can counter hit launch is still pretty good. So he has all of that, and he has this silly combo game, right? What part of Devil Jin needs to go? That's a good question. Forward one plus two for sure. If launching Hell Sweep goes, well, first of all, I don't think you should have the choice between launching Hell Sweep and this. Plus four? That's silly. Honestly, if you just nerf Devil Jin's damage, he's still stupid, but he's less ridiculous. Like, he does so much damage. Even without uh, Floor Break. Shit. See, Heaven's Gate isn't fair just because I fucked that up. It's still dumb. What the hell? Nice. Let's take away back 2 1 then. Get rid of 65 damage health sweep. Yeah. Back 2 1 is insane. But even without back 2 1, consider what other tools he has. Safe knockdown mid into Oki, which sets up his launching hell sweep. Oh my god. This string is silly. Down forward one, two. It's not broken, it's just silly. Do you normally play Devil Jin? Uh, I train him on the side. Oops. You know I don't like question. What's up? Uh oh, I'm dead. Okay, wait. Uh oh, a four. Damn. <laughs> It's a collection of decisions from them. Yeah, and, and, and it's not so much that Devil Jin is the only problem, right? It's not just Devil Jin, but a lot of these decisions come along. How do you determine what needs to get changed when people have different opinions? Sure, a lot of people might hate for Orbital Snake shit, but can you really consider Trouble Jin when it only affects a part of the player base? Yes, and here's why. So, this is a big evidential point. No, no, no worries, no worries. Were you here, Lanthas, for the nuclear weapon analogy? SF Ocelot. The, there are subjective parts and there are objective parts, right? Like... Um... But... Specifically, the ability for the casual player base... And this isn't some... This isn't like a slight or like a derogatory thing. This is evidence-based. The ability of the casual base to detect and perceive the depth of a balance change is less relevant, is less refined than the pro base. And I think that's a fair statement. A pro player can really feel the nuances and the differences in gameplay change relative to a newbie. I think that's a fair statement. It's also evidence-based. I'll bring this up a lot. In League of Legends, there was a... There was a balance change announced for a character that was a hot topic. Riven is a high execution, high reward character. So people were pissed when this happened. Wow. Stuff changed. Her win rate was affected when the patch came out. Her play rate was drastically affected as well. And people were like, oh my god, this change was crazy. Or, oh my god, this change sucked. I don't remember the specific context. But what it boils down to is even with this change, it was revealed later that they didn't actually ship the patch. 
she was only patched in the patch notes, but they didn't actually push the update. And yet, the entire under pro player base felt the difference. And that can carry across to so many things. For example, Devil Jin getting these buffs and nobody being able to use it. Anyways, let me beat this guy. This is hard. Uh oh, it's not what I wanted. Anyways, and yes, if the majority of the player base can't figure out the button, then why did we give them the button in the first place? If they can't figure out how to use it, why do they have it? Um... Wait, to clarify, the patch hadn't shipped, but it affected win rate. So the patch shipped, the patch notes were shipped, but the code wasn't pushed, is what happened. GG's, thanks. Also, Lanthus, yeah, I'm not upset or anything. I'm just, like, trying to structure my argument. But if I lose, I will be upset. And half of you on my screen are getting banned. But yes, if... Focus on set, skip convo for after. You know how I feel about backseating in my chat. I think this is really important. I think it's like, this is a great question. Like, like people would say, oh, well, yeah, it's a nuclear weapon button, but if people don't know how to press it, then what's the big deal? Well, big deal is because half of the population does know how to press it. Or not half, okay? Like the top 1% does know how to press it. This so it affects those people. Second of all, if they don't know how to press it, why do they need that button? So it feels good when they accidentally scrape it once in a while. It sells better, but it's not healthy, and that's the point. Yes, they made the changes, they planned the changes, they wrote down the patch notes, they shipped the patch, but that part wasn't in it. And it affected the win rate and the statistics as if it had shipped. The expected outcome happened without the precursor. Anyways, speaking of expected outcomes, I'm gonna lose this shit because I'm thinking about balance. But it's okay. Great conversation.